think we lost some of us on our Facebook live page. We're going to trust God to, to bring you bring you right back. <laughs> We're going to trust God to bring you back. I see Sister Walters have, have shown up on has shown up on um, on Zoom because we've had a problem with our Facebook Live page. Forward to you coming back and logging back on as technology has its way from time to time. Amen. Amen. Technology is it's excellent when it works well, <laughs> but it is horrible when it goes bad. Amen and thank the name of Jesus. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. <clears throat> so we're going to trust God to do what he, he is good at doing. Amen. Amen and bless the name, the name of Jesus the Christ. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We thank God for for blessing us and bringing us this way. So we have to continue to trust, to trust in the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we blank, we praise you, we elevate your name. We, we honor you, Father God. We bless you. We praise you for just being good and being God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for another privilege, Father God, to come this way. We thank you for your word, Father God. We ask you to bless your word to go forward, that your word will fall on good soil, that lives will be changed, that will be renewed, and that life will be made the better. Lord, we pray for our broadcast on tonight, that men, women, boys, and girls will hear from you on tonight, that lives will be dependent on your word, and that your word will come through for so many. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless our connection. Bless us, Father God, that we will connect along the Wi-Fi. We will connect, Father God, along the air airways, and that we will connect deep down in the hearts of people. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Keep us, Father God, as only you can. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and bless this your word. Bless your word, Father God, to go forth. Bless your word to change our hearts. Bless your word to change our minds. Right. We're in we're in Colossians. We're in Colossians on tonight. We see that our our connection has come back. We're in Colossians chapter two. We're in Colossians chapter two on tonight. Colossians chapter two is where we are, and we will finish this pericope that we have been we've been, been diving into. On tonight, we will finish this particular pericope on tonight. Like we got good signal, look like God is hearing our prayer. So let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. For Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. When you found it, you will discover this word. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in power. You are complete in him. Your completeness is in him. Who is him? Jesus the Christ. We back up a little bit at Colossians chapter 2. We look at Colossians chapter 2 verses 8 and prior to verse 8, we will find that Jesus Christ is the one who God has blessed us with and blessed us through. We find that in verse number 9 and 10 that he's talking about Jesus Christ. The him in my Bible is capitalized. We're talking about Jesus Christ, him. He, he is the one that we find ourselves in. It says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Paul said to us earlier in Philippians, he says to us, 
that Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Now that same Apostle Paul comes back today in Colossians, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and he says, In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You see, because Jesus Christ is it dwells in Jesus Christ. God dwell in Jesus Christ. All things dwell in him as it applies to our spiritual walk. Let's look at it. In him. In him, we are complete. In who? In Jesus Christ. In him, we are complete. In him, we have put off the power of sin. In him, in Jesus Christ, in Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead. All the fullness of the Godhead is found in Jesus Christ bodily. His physique, his body, all, all of the Godhead, the spiritual Godhead came down through 42 generations through Jesus Christ. The fullness of the Godhead was represented and was present with us, those who walked with him, was present with us through Jesus Christ. In him we are complete. In him, verse 10 says, in him we are complete. In him we are complete. We have put off the power of sin. Look at what it says in verse number 10. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and the head of all powers. You see, some woman thought that she was complete in Leroy. Some woman thought that she was complete in Tyrone. Some man thought that Shaquita and Comita could him. But in this spiritual walk that we have in Jesus Christ, we are complete in him. Jesus the Christ is the only one who completes us. We were born in sin. We were shaping in iniquity. We were messed up over and over and over again. We were messed up. But when we receive Jesus Christ, we receive Jesus Christ in line. You don't have to get in another prayer line to receive the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go on TV to receive the Holy Spirit. You don't need to tell evangelists to help you receive the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, if you're born again, you are complete in him. You are complete in Jesus the Christ. You have the full the fullness of the Godhead, the fullness of God himself in Jesus Christ. We have put off the power of sin. When we got saved, we were not only saved from the penalty of sin, but we also are saved from the power of sin. We do not have to sin. We do not have to sin over and over again. We, not have to, we do not have to sin the same sin one time after the other. We now have allowed Christ to have dominion over us. Christ Jesus has dominion over us. Sin no longer has dominion over us. We have received Jesus Christ, and he, Jesus Christ, presents us with the full Godhead. We have put off the power of sin. We have been fulfilled. We have been forgiven. We have been set free. We have been given a new life in Jesus Christ. We have been delivered to the point that we are made over again. You are not the same person you used to be if you're saved. 
If you are born again, Jesus Christ has made you whole. He has given you a new life. And in the process of giving you this new life, you've been changed. You remember the old days? You remember what you used to do? You remember how things used to be? But in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it tells us that we are new in him. Through Jesus Christ, the full Godhead is presented to us. We are complete in him. In him is the head of all principalities. And who? In Jesus. In Jesus is the head of all principalities and all power. We are freed from the power of the spirit that once bound us. We are freed from the power of the spirit that once bound us. We are freed from the power of spiritual beings that once held us captive. Mm -hmm. We're free now. God has set you free. The problem with many of us is that we don't know that we're free. We suffer like many Texans suffered. Many Texans were free from slavery for a year and a half. And they didn't know they were free. They didn't understand that they were free. They didn't believe they were free. They were free for a year and a half. But it wasn't until a soldier shows up in Galveston, Texas, and shows them and read the letter that they have been set free. I come tonight to read you the letter. And the letter is found in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. You've been set free. You no longer are, is in bondage. You are no longer walking in the ways of the devil. You don't have to do what you do that's wrong. Paul also says that we are led astray by our own desires to do evil. We don't have to walk under the power of the devil anymore. We don't have to walk under the power of sin anymore. We don't have to walk under the old principalities and the old powers. We are set free. We are spiritual beings been set free by Jesus Christ himself. Since the time of our new birth experience, you don't need anything or anybody other than Jesus Christ to let you know you're set free. You don't need any man to let you know you're free. I'm just coming to read the letter <laughs> to let you know you're free. You, don't, you can't depend on anybody to set you free. You're in bondage if you have not received Jesus Christ. But once you receive him, you are set free from the wiles of the devil. Amen. You no longer have to fight the battle on your own. Jesus Christ steps into the battle and takes your place. He fights the battle for you. We've been set free through Jesus Christ. He is our all-sufficient Christ. He is our all-sufficient Messiah. He's our all-sufficient anointed Savior. And he has become our Lord. We've been set free. The reason why Paul has to tell the church at Colossae that they've been set free because there were some Gnostics there. Mm -hmm. And the Gnostics believe that the body is evil. The Gnostics believe that Jesus was a mere spirit. The Gnostics believe that God was divided into several angelic beings. They believe this stuff, but Paul sets the record straight. Paul says it's in him. Paul says it's in Jesus Christ. Don't get caught up with what the Gnostics believe. That the body is evil, that Jesus was a mere spirit, that Jesus was a mere man, 
We have religions today that say that Jesus is just another prophet. Let me just tell you, he's not just another prophet. He is our only savior. Yes. He is the only one who can save us. He's Jesus the Christ. The Judaizers believed that special knowledge and special works made Christians complete. See, some even today believe that our works set us free. Some today believe that because of what we do that are good, we are set free. We're saved because of it. Mm -hmm. But I stop by to let you know on my way to the rapture to let you know that your works have never set you free. What Jesus did on Calvary is the only thing that can set you free. Yes. He has set us free. We're set free today. To all those who are living, we celebrate. We celebrate Juneteenth because the man showed up in Gaveston and wrote a letter and read the letter. The letter says that all slaves in the United States, all slaves in the South have, have been set free. I read this letter to you tonight, Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, to let you know you've been set free. Mm -hmm. Act like it. Walk like it. Talk like it. You've been set free. The other thing that Paul points out here is leadership. We must be following the right leader in, in order to be set free. John Maxwell says it like this. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. The demonstration that we saw on last night. The demonstration that we saw on last night was the worst example of real leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. If the New Beginning Church is going to make it, it's going to rise and fall on Matthew Alexander Davis' leadership. Because if it fails, they're going to say that, that, that he couldn't hold it together. They're not going to mention Deacon Alfred. They're not going to mention the Sunday school teachers, uh, Brother Whitlock. They're not going to mention Brother Miles. They're, they're not going to mention the, the, the leader of the women, Sister Henry. They're, they're not going to mention Sister Paul, the leaders of the First Impression Ministry. They're not going to mention, mention Sister, Sister Lou Matthews and the media ministry. They're not going to mention Sister Tangela Walters. They are not going to mention Sister Davis and leader of our choir. They are going to mention the fact that Matthew Davis could not keep it together. And I could have been doing every possible, possible thing I could make happen, anything that I can do, praying and calling on the Lord. But if the New Beginning Church fails, it's that Matthew Davis guy that couldn't let it happen, couldn't make it happen, Amen. couldn't hold it together. I knew he wasn't all that. You hear people talking about it. They'll say, out of all the stuff that God had brought him through, he couldn't hold it together. Out of all the things that these great United States of America has come through, we have a leader who cannot hold it together. We have a leader. We have a leader who has allowed over 205,000 people to die. Everything rises and falls on leadership. It doesn't matter if you take responsibility or not. At the end of the day, everything rises and falls on leadership. Not on the musician, not on the Sunday school teachers, on the leadership. That's why I proved, that's why I proved this message that, that, that everything that happens at the New Beginning Chase rises and falls on my leadership. Leaders take responsibility. Jesus is our great leader. Mm -hmm. He has taken the full responsibility of our souls. Jesus is our leader. And if it was Jesus who was leading us, then millions wouldn't be sick because Jesus would look out for us. If it was Jesus that was leading us or a man that followed Jesus, 
over 205 vacancies would not be in the bedroom nor at the dinner table. If the great United States of America is ever going to be made great again, if the great United States of America is going to be the, the moving mechanism in the superpower of this world ever again, it's going to take them falling on their knees calling on Jesus. Because the fullness of the Godhead aligns with Jesus. The fullness of the Godhead is in him bodily. God showed up in a body. Jesus Christ's body. Paul explains, it is in Jesus. Our completeness is in him. In him, in his body, we have the full Godhead. The deity is in Jesus. G Jesus became the incarnate God. He is the, in the incarnation of God. He is the incarnate God. He is God present with us. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. And verse number 14 of John chapter 1 says, and the, and the, and the word became flesh and dwelled among. Jesus became the incarnation, the incarnate God present with us completely. He's deity. He's superiority. He makes us whole and he is the whole God himself. He is the power of God. He is the influence of God. He is the divinity in the flesh, in the body. The visible image of the invisible God. In him, we have completeness. In, in him, we put off the power of sin. In him, we are fulfilled. In him, we are set free. In him, we are forgiven. In him, we are given new life. In Jesus Christ, we have new life. In him, the head of all principalities, verse number 10 says, he is the head of all principalities and of power. We are free of all spiritual damage that has been previously done by us in the devil. He is the all-sufficient Savior, the all-sufficient Christ, the all-sufficient Deliverer. Jesus Christ is himself. We don't need another person. We don't need another death. What Jesus did on Calvary was enough. When he died on Calvary, he, he broke the chain. We sang the song, break every chain. Jesus Christ broke every chain on Calvary. He, 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 died, a suspect, a sus, he died such a great death until he substituted for us. It is the image of a courtroom scene where the client is guilty, but the attorney, the defense attorney, takes the charges on his behalf. Jesus took our charges, yes. and he took it on our behalf. I need to stop at verse number 10 because it ends this pericope. So if, you, if you're with me, stay with me. In Jesus Christ... All we need is in him. All we need is in Jesus Christ. Everything. Every spiritual thing that we would ever need is found in Jesus Christ. We should not put our hope in Mary, the mother of Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. All we need is in him. All we have is in him. If you're spiritual, if you're born again, you are spiritually born again through him. All we will receive is in him. Everything we will ever receive spiritually is found in Jesus Christ. All we will receive is in him. All we will be is in him. Everything that you can ever think of being, everything that you can successfully be is found in Jesus Christ. It is in him 
and him alone. All that we are is in him. And who? In Jesus Christ. All that we are is found in Jesus Christ. All we are is in him. All we will be is in him. All we will be is in Jesus Christ. I've been told before, as many of you have, why do you believe in a man you can't see? And I ask the same question to them. Why do you believe in, in oxygen that you can't see? Well, because oxygen keeps me living. Well, the same man that you're talking about, Jesus Christ, he's keeping me alive. He's keeping me alive physically, and he's keeping me alive spiritually. He is keeping me alive. And for many of you, you know when somebody gets on your nerve, the Lord, Jesus the Christ, is keeping the other person alive. <laughs> because had he run up on you in previous times, before you received Jesus Christ, he wouldn't be alive. Jesus is keeping me alive and he's keeping others alive because of the way I respond to that. All that we will ever be, if we're going to have authority, it's in Jesus Christ. Yes. We have so much authority in Jesus Christ. We have the authority in Jesus Christ that our lives will be powerful if we just walk in the authority through Jesus Christ. We have authority in him. We ought to talk like we have authority. We ought to walk like we have authority. Amen. We ought to expect blessings. We ought to expect miracles. Amen. We ought to expect favor. Our influence is through Jesus Christ. Our rights come through Jesus Christ. Our liberties come through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our dreams, our hopes come through Jesus Christ. Our health comes through Jesus Christ. Our strength comes through yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. Our deliverance comes through Jesus Christ. Our focus comes through Jesus. When you see a debate like you saw last night where a man couldn't stay focused, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's ADHD, HD, ADD. I don't know what it is, but at the bottom, bottom, the bottom line is it's because he's not in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus helps us to stay focused. Yes. Jesus helps us to be motivated to serve him. Our joy comes through Jesus Christ. You see, we may not be happy because happiness is based on what is happening. Happiness is based on what is happening. Yes. But joy is based on being in Jesus the Christ. You ought to get joy out of being in him. If you have bad things going on, you may not be happy about it, but you got great joy. Yes. How can you go through things that are going wrong and not be bent out of shape about it? It's because Jesus on the inside gives you joy in the midst of all this other stuff that's happening around you. You see, we want Jesus to stand on the top of the ship like he did in Mark chapter, chapter 4, where the winds were blowing and the, the storms were raging. Every time a storm st comes up, Jesus is not going to calm the storm. Just get used to, get used to it. Every time you have a storm, Jesus is not going to perform this great miracle that you see in Mark chapter 4, where they woke him up. Jesus stands up and says, peace be still, and the wind and the waves laid down and slept like a baby. I would love if I could have that testimony, that every time I look up, all I got to do is call on God, and God will lay the winds and the waves and the storms would cease. But the songwriter was right. He says, if the storms keep on raging in my life, I have joy because my soul is anchored. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Let me tell you, be born again, get born again, get to know Jesus, and your soul can be anchored. Yes. 
While other folk are turning flips, other people are jumping off buildings, other people are, are, are committing suicide, you can be calm to the, through the storm. Because you know you're walking with Jesus and Jesus can keep you through the storm. Let me just say to you today, Jesus won't always calm the storm. Many times he just calms his child in the storm. God won't always shut the storm down. Sometimes God will shut down the child in the midst of the storm. Where you can rest, be at ease, where you can take the storm. Walk through the storm. Sleep through the storm. Said to somebody the other day, if God never sleeps nor slumbers, if God is all places at the same time, if God is all powerful and all knowing, if God is awake at night, don't you stay awake worrying about it. Let God stay awake and let him handle it. That's right. God is our joy. He's our peace. He's our peace. He's our peace. In the midst of this world is turned upside down. Yes, it is. But those of us who are saved are to vote and we ought to be at peace. Amen. We, ought to, we ought to vote. We ought to let our voices be heard. We ought to make sure we have a rally cry. But in the midst of the storm, we ought to have peace. In the African-American neighborhood, People didn't understand why we said what we said and we did what we did. You see, when, whenever, whenever the economy gets turned upside down, you don't have to jump off buildings because we already been through something. Mm -hmm. We know that according to Romans chapter 8, that the Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us. The Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us with moaning and groaning that we do not know of. So when you're moaning, when you're in peace, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to God on your behalf. He will do it for you if you're born again. In him, in him we have faith. We have faith through Jesus the Christ. The Bible says that he has given to every man a measure of faith. For those of us who are saved, those of us who are depending on God, we read the word of God and we hear the good news. We have faith in the word of God. As we read the word of God, we, we, are, we are built up in the word. You see, saints ought to build people up in the word. Yes. We ought not counsel them through. We ought not walk them through, pray them through without giving them the word of God. It's the word that gives us faith. Faith, we ought to walk in faith through him. In him, Jesus Christ gives us faith. We have love through him. In him comes love. You, you ever known anybody to love their enemies? They got to do it through him. <laughs> you can't love your enemies unless you're walking in him. You can't walk with your enemies unless you walk and talk with him. You got to walk with him. You got to love him. You got to spend time with him and he will give you love for your enemies and for your, your foes as well as your friends. During these days where the United States is turned upside down, people that you thought were your friends, you're being, beginning to find out that they're really not. People that's not your color, not your, not your race that you've been walking with, working with, spending time with, now that the rubber has really met the road, you find out because of your color, they really didn't like you anyway. But Jesus says, love your enemies. You got to be able to love them in spite of them. You got to be able to love them to a point where you walk in him and him, he gives you love. You have to love them to a point where it's like pouring hot coals upon their head. In him we have love. Yes. And finally, in him we have endurance. In him we have endurance. We, we, we have perseverance through him. We don't give up. We don't give up. We just keep coming back with more. 
Job says it like this. Though he slays me, yet will I trust. I'm going to endure to the end. Will you endure to the end? Will you hang in there? Will you hold on? Amen. Will you walk with Jesus? Will you stay with him? Will you endure to the end? Just hang in there just a little while longer. The way things are going now, Jesus is coming back soon. Just hang in there. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't give in. Endure to the end. Paul says, in him I live. In him I move. And in him I have my being. Colossians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 says that Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ is the closest and the only representation we have of God on planet Earth. He is the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus says, I have to leave you, but the Holy Spirit is coming. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will show you all things. Mm -hmm. He will redeem the times. He will, he, will, he will repeat and he will confirm what I've told you. It says in him we are complete. There's somebody tonight that's incomplete. You have not been completed in Jesus. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to be complete in Jesus. No other church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to get to know Jesus tonight. You can't afford to go to sleep. You can't afford to go to bed. You can't wait to Sunday morning because none of those are promised to you. But the only moment you have is right now. Door the church is open. You need to get to know Jesus the Christ. Get to know him for yourself. Back home they were said like this. What mama got is good. What daddy has is good. But God blessed the child with his own. Then the senior saints would say it like this. Every tub must sit on his own bottom. What I'm saying to you today that you need to get to know Jesus for yourself. You can do that right now. Amen. If you believe this story that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried in a borrowed tomb, and he rose that third day morning from the dead. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, if you believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now right on the airway, right, right in your home, right driving down the road in your car, looking at your phone, your iPad, your computer, your tablet, you can be saved right here, right now. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. It's just a simple thing. We can just invite him into our lives right now. And, and we can be saved right here, right now. Will you join me in prayer? Just repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. We believe if you pray this prayer that you are born again and when you die, you're on your way to heaven. Now you have to become a part of a good Bible teaching church. There are many in this nation, many in this world, but I rep recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is leading, guiding, and directing us. You can be saved right here today. And then you can become a part of the New Beginning Church. If you prayed this prayer to invite Christ into your life, inbox me, message me, and let me know 
that you receive Jesus Christ so I can rejoice with you. And if you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church, you can do so by inboxing me or by inboxing any member of the church or messaging any member. Let us know that you have a heart's desire to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And we'll get you signed up, get you a part of the family of faith. And if you need prayer, we don't have to know your business, but if you need prayer, let us know you need prayer and we'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you and walk with you through this thing called life. So let us know that you need, you need prayer. And now this time it is offering time and it's time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give unto the Lord. The Lord has blessed us and the Lord has kept us. And certainly we want to give unto the Lord. You can do that in three, three different ways. You can do it by our cash app. Our cash app is dollar sign NBC souls, dollar sign. NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Or you can give by mailing it to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We're looking forward to your gifts. We're looking forward to you participating on a regular basis at the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our Bible study. We are here by Zoom and here by Facebook Live every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Please continue to join us. We're also here on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., for our Sunday school time. Come and be a part of our Sunday school. Our youth and our young people are, are operating their Sunday school by way of Kahoot. Uh, please inbox me and let me know if you have a child, whether that child is a part of the New Beginning Church or not, and they can get involved in our Sunday school by way of Kahoot. They have a good time, a fun time by way of Kahoot in their Sunday school class. So you can join us at 9 a.m. for Sunday school on Sunday morning. And you can join us at 10.45 a.m. every Sunday for our Sunday worship service. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We pray that God continue to bless you and keep you and be a part of our service. I want to say to you before we leave, register to vote. Get registered to vote. Uh, you have to October the 5th, October the 5th to vote. Go ahead and get registered. Re get registered. You have to October the 5th to register to vote. Go ahead and vote by October 5th. Then you need to make sure that you go out and vote. Uh, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton says it like this. If you're protesting, if you're marching, and you're not voting, you're just talking loud and saying nothing. So go ahead and vote. The third thing I want you to do is pray. Continue to pray. As you see... On last night, we need prayer. Now I understand real well, if I never understood before, why Jesus says, pray for those who have rule over you. <laughs> Not only in the church, but pray for those who are your leaders. Pray for the president. Lord, have mercy. Pray fast and pray. Pray with fervor. Pray and call on the Lord on his behalf, that God will, will touch his heart, that God will will make a move like never before because you know God is going to make a move. We need to pray that God makes a move in his spiritual life in the name of Jesus. On this Sunday, this coming Sunday, we'll be having our communion. Go ahead and get your crackers, your juice, and, and have communion with us. We use juice. We use grape juice particularly. Uh, you got any juice that would be a representation of the, the Lord's blood. We'll be glad to join for your joining us for communion. We don't drink wine for our communion, but we do drink juice. Amen. So please join us as we take on communion on Sunday morning at our 1045 service. Again, we're praying for Houston area churches. We're praying for churches worldwide, especially nationwide. 
We're praying particularly for the Holman Street Church, that the church will be led and guided in, in their decision-making for a new leader. And we're also praying for the new Mount Calvary Church and the devastation of their church. We're praying for that church. We're also praying for the Lake Jackson community. The Lake Jackson community, we're praying for that community as their water system is out. And this Saturday, I will be journeying down there to give them bottles of water, to give them a truckload, maybe two or three truckloads of water. If you want to join me, you can do that. If you want to bring water, you can bring it on Friday night to the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to take your water and journey on Saturday morning down to Lake Jackson. Um, they are said to be without water for some four months now. And so we want to be beneficiaries. Uh, we want them to be beneficiaries to our gifts. We want to make sure that we give unto them. Amen. So Friday night, I'll be at the church collecting water from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please join me at the church to help me pack it up. Help me decide how many trucks we need. If you have a truck and you want to lend that, that church, you want to drive a truck load down to Lake Jackson, we would thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on tonight. To our visitors, thank you for joining us. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Amen. Thank you again. God bless you and keep you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now that Jesus Christ is the fullness of God. The fullness of the Godhead lies in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you blessed us, Father God, that we've been set free through Jesus. And we know, Father God, that the letter has been read, and the letter is saying that we are free. We are free from evil ways. We are free from sin. We're no longer bound. We are free from the principalities and the power of sin. The devil has no control over us, for Jesus has come. And Jesus has set us free. Now, Lord, we bless your name. We praise you and we honor you. And we thank you for him, for Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We enjoy having you. And please, sir, please, ma'am, continue to join us and continue to give to the New Beginning Church. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.